How much light does the past shed on the present? In the parliamentary archive, every cough and splutter of our political history is contained in the parchments and scrolls. Making the claim that we are living through the most difficult constitutional moment in our history is quite an assertion when some of these boxes deal with cutting off the king's head and losing the American colonies. Nevertheless, some believe we are living through some of the most difficult times of our history. In the archive, you can find the original copy of the 1972 Act that took us into Europe. One of those who negotiated our entry into the common market believes the circumstances of that time have parallels today. Well, I think we went through a very rough patch in the 1970s uh, with the defeat of the Heath government in the election and a rather weak uh, Labour government with a tiny majority disappearing in the course of the Parliament, uh, having to go to the IMF for a big loan, uh, and a general uh, demoralisation uh, of what I'd call the political class, uh, which was very, very prevalent during the 1970s. But I think the depth of that um, uh, crisis was rather less than the depth of the one we're in at the moment. Are these days of unprecedented division? Perhaps not. We remember the comparative unity of the Second World War, but not the strife that came before and after. This is actually what elections looked like in 1966. Well, I think the notion that Britain has always been a united country is a myth because, I mean, you've only got to think of, um, obviously, the Civil War. But more analogous, I think, to the present situation are the 1930s. For most people, the 1930s, apart from it being the prelude to the Second World War, is of the hunger marches. And the point about the hunger marches is, I think, quite similar to today, because it was very much about the sort of north-south divide. And it was also about the feeling that the government didn't know what to do. I mean, we're completely at a loss of what to do. And in many cases, I mean, the Prime Minister, for example, refused a petition, refused to see the hunger marches. The division of the 30s was only ended by the Second World War, one crisis replaced by something more profound. The problem with historical parallels is it's hard to see which events are truly significant as we're living through them. It could be something that's going to be a blip that we shall look back on and say, what are we getting so excited about? You know, we're not, we're not seeing bombs going off. We're not invading other countries. Our, our security is not threatened. We're not arresting masses of people. The country is not being brought to a standstill. I mean, I think where the excitement comes from is in a sense that we don't know quite where we're going. We are on, on, in uncharted territory in some ways. I mean, what does it mean if the Prime Minister is in contempt of Parliament? I mean, in the 17th century, it might have meant that she'd be put in the Tower of London, but now no one knows if it means anything at all. More troops sail for the Mediterranean to strengthen Britain's hand in the Middle East conflict. The Suez Crisis of the 1950s was a national humiliation. Part of the shock came from the huge gap between how we saw ourselves, a global superpower, and how we truly were, a European power unable to project significant force without American permission. Was Brexit born of a similar perception gap between self-image and reality? It's about an inability to face uh, the United Kingdom's very different position in the, in the world. Uh, it's also uh, about trying to recapture pasts which I think in most cases didn't exist. There's some notion of a deep continuity in British history that needs to be recaptured. Well, the past is gone. Uh, we, are, we are where we are and we are a significant economy in, in, in Europe but not a major player. And when the Prime Minister says we're going to lead the world into the fourth industrial revolution just as we did the first, we know there's something fundamentally wrong with the nature of political discourse in, the, in Britain today. How much, though, of the current sense of crisis is down to this lot, the circus of 24-hour news, ramping up and amplifying everything? At least this has given future historians a metric with which to measure political tumult. For the record, this was a 10 gazebo crisis.